Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are that couldn't, make it. couldn't make it, and the saints watching in on the camera, the only thing we say to them is repent that they might yeah. live. And the saints that are far off. What I say? I forgot that part. And the saints that are far off. You know what I mean? But everybody else, repent. That's the best thing for you. What repent mean? Turn away. You got to turn away from sin. Which sin? All sin. All sin. Every one of them things. You know what I'm talking about? Some people think repent. Well, I repented from that sin. I mean, that's cool, but that ain't what the most high God talking about. I repented from this particular sin. I mean, that's good, right? But that ain't what the most high God talking about. You gotta turn from all of it. <laughs> and then what you what you gotta put your face towards? Your faith toward God. Where faith towards God. You repent from sin, you turn from sin, and put your faith towards God. You do that, man, you in a good place. You in a good place. But you know what the hardest part of that is? Turning from sin. Right? You get into a place where you love it. You're trapped by it. Right? You can't stop. You want to stop, but you feel like you can't stop. Right? That's the hard part. Sin is the hard part. You know what I'm saying? And once you make that decision in your brain, you just do it. Oh, it's coasting after that. All right? It's coasting. All right? You settle in your spirit that you're going to follow the most high God. You're coasting after that. It's an easy way. It's an easy way. You know what I'm saying? It's a light burden. The heavy burden is carrying around that sin. All the stuff that, you know, all the stuff that follow you around all your life. That's the heavy burden. Right? What? I don't know what's wrong with you, son. I'm good, huh? No, I'm talking about I'm good. What did <laughs> yes, he is, but ain't sleep. That's why he's delirious. <laughs> Go ahead. I know what you want to say. Go ahead. Um, what did we learn about him? Well, I mean, last week. Can't even get it right. He's been sitting there trying to say it. He tried, you know, he's trying to take my line so much, he can't even say him right. Yes, I can. There we go. You and TJ, both of y'all haters. <laughs> uh, so, what we learned about the week before last? Because last week was pa Passover, boy. Oh, yeah. It take a long time to get where I am. The week before. Yeah. Yeah, smart guy. Don't nobody remember? King Solomon. King Solomon. King Solomon? I don't remember King Solomon. I do, but... How many wives King Solomon have? <laughs> yeah, the kings and the queens are coming to see him. I remember you were like, he has so many wives. Probably two. Yeah, so we want how many you have though? No remember the number? Eleven. Eleven? No, a little bit more than that. Five hundred? Yeah. It was seven hundred wives. And three hundred concubines. And three hundred concubines. So he had about a thousand women that he had dealing with. Right? Damn. All right? He had a whole lot. I got one that get on my nerves. That's great. Yeah, buddy, that's a lot of work. 
Silver was what? So he didn't say that. The narrative was telling you that in Israel, silver was counted as nothing. It was counted as rocks. It was like rocks. Yeah. Right. It was like, it was like stones. Right. Yeah. Right. Silver was like stones. That's right. All right. Remember, our law told us not to multiply silver and gold, not to multiply wives, and not to multiply what? Horses. Horses. All right. We couldn't multiply horses. And he also had a stable of like 12, I think it was 1,200 horses, something like that. He had right? a lot of horses. Yeah. So he, Solomon was a baller. You know, so he did all those things. Right through gifts and through relationships and all these different things, he had this huge empire. Solomon made up. LeBron James look like a poor man. That boy, LeBron James, trash. That boy, trash. <laughs> that boy, trash. Big trash. I'm just saying, LeBron James is like worth a billion. LeBron James worth like a billion, but Solomon made look made LeBron James look like a poor man, like the way the Bible, how rich Solomon was. All right, everybody relax. We'll talk about this after. So we look at this and we see that Solomon is in a, in a situation where or he was in a situation where he had disobeyed God, um, disobeyed our law. And then he had all these women and these women began to pull him into their traditions, serving their gods in the way that they, they serve their gods. So this made the most high God upset. There was a gentleman named Jeroboam, right? Jeroboam was one of the rulers. He was one of the captives underneath Solomon. So in other words, Solomon was his boss, but Jeroboam also was a boss, right? And Jeroboam ruled the northern kingdom, or the northern, I'm sorry, the northern tribes, right? So there was, the, the, the kingdom was always split into kind of two, you know what I'm saying? So you have the southern area, which is mostly Judah, and then you have the northern area, where it has a lot of the other tribes there. So Jeroboam, when uh, he started to kind of, you know what I'm saying, have a little beef, little beef with Solomon, you know what I'm saying, he was caught by one of the prophets, and the prophets told him, you know what I'm saying, he's like, listen, man, you know what I'm saying, he ripped his jacket, tore it into 10 pieces, you know what I'm saying, or tore it into pieces, rather, and then gave him 10 pieces, and the prophecy was that he would take 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So then Solomon... Because Solomon is wise, he saw the play. And he went after Jeroboam to kill him. Right? But Jeroboam escaped. He went into Egypt. Right? Or, mm, yeah. or yeah. Mm, I forget. Hold on. He went down south. We'll say he went south. You know what I'm saying? And when he went south, you know what I'm saying? Solomon continued on. And eventually Solomon died. After Solomon died, he had a son. Who remembers his son's name? Yeah, had a son got named... that far with that. No? Mm -mm. Where we leave off then? We left, we left off at 1 Kings 11. We Give me the end of first. So let's refresh. Let's see where we left off. I don't remember either. Let's see what we uh let's see what the last thing we read. This is 1 Kings chapter 11, and then we'll pick up from there. It's 1 Kings chapter 11. Um give me, I don't want the last 30. verse. Verse 30 is what I want. Yeah. So this is 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 30. Let's see what the book says. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and ripped it in 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, take 10 pieces. For thus says Yahuwah, God of Israel, behold, I will rip the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon. And I've not walked in my ways to do that which was right in my eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments as David did, as David, his father. Mm -hmm. Howbeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for my servant David's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto you, ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city that I've chosen to put my name. All right, so this is the message that was given to Jeroboam. I want y'all to pay attention to what was told to him. Jeroboam was told that he would get 10 tribes. He was told that Solomon would not have the kingdom ripped 
from him while he was alive, but he would rip it from his son. Okay. Then after that, he said, but he's not going to take everything away from him. He's going to keep Judah for him, the place that God chose to have his name. So Jeroboam is being told right now, hey, you're going to get you you gonna get a whole lot of this kingdom. Yeah, he went over to Egypt. He went to Egypt? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a whole lot of this kingdom, right? But you're not going to get the whole thing. The one, the place where my temple is, where my name is chosen, the place where I am, you're not going to get that. From a king standpoint, you have to think about this. We're all the same people, but now we being split. That means I got family down there. You know what I'm saying? It's like technically like North Town and West Side. You go back far enough, we family. We the same type of people, right? We just in different, think of it like different cities and different states, right? So he's saying you split. So in his mind, he's thinking about, oh, okay, I get this part of the pie. But which one do you, what part of the pie do you think might feel like is better? The part that is more people, maybe, but it doesn't have the place where the most high God had his name. So it don't got the big, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Think of it like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like you can add a city. What do you want? The strip? You want the part of the city that got the strip or you want North Town? Strip. You're going to want the strip, right? So you got, you got, uh, you're looking at uh, Solomon. Solomon still got the strip, right? So he's telling him, well, technically re Solomon's son, right? Still got the strip. So Solomon, while he living, nothing going to be ripped from him. So what do you think Jeroboam about to do? Let's see. And I will take you, and you shall reign according to all your soul desires, and it and shall be king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And it shall be if you will listen unto all that I command you. And if you do what I say. Ways. That's what he's saying. If you do what I say. Conditional. Most High God is always conditional. If you do what I say. What happened? And do that which is right in my sight. Uh -huh. To keep my statutes and my commandments. Mm -hmm. As David, my servant, did, mm -hmm. that I will be with you and build you a sure house mm -hmm. as I built for David and will give Israel unto you. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. So and why do you think he ran to Egypt? <clears throat> to kind of tell you right there, right? He ran to Egypt until the death of Solomon. Why do you think he ran to Egypt? He ran away from Solomon. Solomon's going to kill him. Solomon's going to kill him. But he just got prophecy that when Solomon dies, what's going to happen? That's crazy. Say it. That's right. He going to get part of the kingdom. He was just told, hey, I'm going to rip this from him. I ain't going to do it while Solomon alive. But when Solomon's son come, and that's the boy Solomon gone, oh, I'm taking that thing from him. So Jeroboam looking like, I can't whoop you right now. But I'll wait you out. So he go down to Egypt and he sit around. Because he know as soon as Solomon die, his son going to take over. And when his son going to take over, guess what? It's my time. Right? So he just playing it smart. So he go down into Egypt. Let's go into uh, 1 Kings chapter 12. Let's get right to it. It's 1 Kings chapter 12. Watch this. I love this thing, man. I love this thing. What? Go see what your sister wants. <coughs> and Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. So now Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. He's going to a place called Shechem, right? This place called Shechem is where he's going to be made king. Let's get some maps up because I want y'all to be able to visualize as much of this as possible. So let's see. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about Shechem. Let's see if we can get Shechem on the screen here. Okay, we got Shechem on the screen. And now that we got Shechem on the screen, we're going to look at... Uh, let me put it on the screen for the people online. All right. So now that we got Shechem on the screen, um, here we go. Shechem right here. So now everything going down in Jerusalem. This is where the kingdom is. This is where the temple is. Everything right around this area. 
but Rehoboam went into Shechem. This green area is the area that Jeroboam was working for Solomon now. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get it twisted. He's working for Solomon, but he was responsible for that area. So think of it like, you know what I'm saying? You got a manager and underneath that manager, you got a supervisor. Or you got, you know what I'm saying? You got like a vice president of the company and underneath that, that vice president, you got like a manager or something like that, right? So Jeroboam was the manager or the supervisor of that green area, right? Jeroboam said, no, I'm getting out of Dodge. And he came down here, you know what I'm saying? The Egypt is, you know what I'm saying, off the chart, but over here. So he came down here. So Rehoboam said, I'm pretty cool with Jer Jerusalem, but now I'm about to be made king. So he did it in a political way. He said, let me do it in the northern tribe instead of staying where I am. It was a wise move, right? If you're going to be king, you want to show love to everybody, right? So he, he went ahead and went to Shechem. Let's see what happened. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. Look, Jeroboam, he heard a real boy going to Shechem. He about to be made king. When he heard of it, he was like, oh, man, somebody load me up a darn donkey, a darn horse. You know what I'm saying? Let's make our way up north. Let's see. Keep going. For he was fled from the presence of Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. Mm -hmm. That they sent, they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke. Hold on, So they called for him, right? The northern tribes called for Jeroboam. They were like, yo, 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 Jeroboam, that boy on his way. It's a plan already. He already got people. He got contacts. They let him know. So Jeroboam come up. Jeroboam used to lead these people for Solomon, right? So they already respect him, Right? So he come, Rehoboam is coming up. And Jeroboam leading the charge, he back in town now. He go to Rehoboam and he say this, watch this. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel come and they spoke, spoke to Rehoboam saying, your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore, make the grievous service, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter and we will serve you. Right? So in other words, they saying, man, your father used to have us working hard. Right? They, that's how they felt. Now, who knows? You know what I'm saying? When we read it, man, they had a lot of time off. Them boy had a lot of time off. And not just them, but everybody, even the slaves had a lot of time off. Right? So one thing that you'll, you'll learn, right, when you get into business, like at my job, when I first started my job, Oh, that was some hard work. Everything was manual. You didn't have no systems that would do work for you and automate the work for you. Everything was manual. You couldn't make no mistakes. You had to double check your own work. You make a mistake. You get a quality being all this stuff, right? It was a mess. Difficult work. You had to think outside the box just to solve simple problems. Now, we got all types of systems that do work for you and tell you exactly what you need to do and catch your mistakes for them and show it to you, correct it for you, all types of stuff, right? Now, was people complaining about hard work when I was coming up? Yep. Are people complaining about hard work now when, in my opinion, it's easy? Yep. Because it's all about perspective. If you grew up and this is the only thing you know, it might be hard for you. Even though people that came before were way hard. That's why when we look at y'all, y'all little message y'all be getting into, we're like, boy, you ain't even going through nothing. Back in my day, you used to have to da da da. Because because our perspective is different. We get to see both of them. We get to see how hard it was for us versus how easy it is for y'all. Right? But y'all, y'all only got the experience that y'all got. So everything just feel like the end of the world to y'all. So y'all complain about it. Well, that's likely what's happening here. In their minds, it's like, no, this is hard work. Even though they're not comparing it to people in other places that may be working a lot harder. They're just thinking about their personal experience and how they feel. Yo daddy used to have us working hard. I tell you what, if you make work a little bit easier, we will rock with you. That's what Jeroboam said to Rehoboam. Now, you think Jeroboam really trying to make that deal? No. Jeroboam's just trying to cause a little trouble. You know what I'm saying? He trying to, Jeroboam's just trying to look for a reason to be like, no, nah, we don't mess with you no more. Right? So now Rehoboam hears this. Let's see what happens. And he said unto them, depart yet for three days and come again to me 
and the people departed. Right? So Rick Bro, I'm like, man, give me a couple days to think about this. Give me a few days to think about this. Right? So all the people left. He was like, man, I'll talk to y'all when y'all get back to y'all. I'll give y'all some type of decision whether I'm going to lighten up the load for you or not. Right? So Rehoboam, you know what I'm saying? He took a couple days to think about it. Let's see what happened. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived. Now, Rehoboam ain't a young kid. He like 40 years old. Right? So this is a, this is a grown man. But at the same time, he got respect. Remember, his, his daddy was one of the wisest men ever. Right. So he's looking at it like, all right, let me talk to some of the people that was around my dad. So he took the counselors that was around his dad. They gave his dad advice and that made decisions with his dad. He asked them, how should I handle this? Let's see what happens. How do you advise that I answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, if you will be a servant unto this people to this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grew up that grew up with him, and which stood before him. Right. So now think about it. This man, he got a little bit more experience. He probably gets to travel to other, you know, there other places and see how other kings treat their people and all that. So just imagine he kind of looking at it like, boy, I didn't been over to Edom, and people work way harder in Edom, right? I've been to Egypt a couple of times. People work hard over in Egypt. And y'all complaining about this? So when the old man is like, yo, if you listen to them and just lighten up their load, they, them people will rock with you. He probably looking at that like, listen to that mess. You know what I'm saying? So then he went to the boys he came up with. Right? Watch this. And he said unto them, what counsel do you give that we may answer these people who spoke to me saying, Make the yoke which my father put up on us lighter. Right? So he went to the people. He he came up with some people probably closer to his age, not these super older dudes that that, that was his dad's age. He's closer to his age. And he asked him, he's like, what y'all think? How y'all think I should respond to him? And watch what his friend said. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, "You, this is what you say unto the people that spoke unto you. <laughs> he said, look, this is what you should say to him. Watch this. Saying, your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter unto us. Thus shall you say to them, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Now, he said, look, my pinky finger going to be bigger than my father's midsection. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to talk about what he really talking about. You know what I'm saying? But he said, my little pinky finger going to be bigger than my daddy. Right? Watch this. And now, where my father laid you with heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. He said, look, you thought my father put something on you. Oh, I'm going to put a little bit more there. Right? Watch this. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Y'all got out of line with my daddy. He might hit you with a whip. I'm going to put scorpions on your butt. In other words, he's saying, I'm taking it up a level. Right? Whatever y'all thought was bad, it's about to get worse then. Right? He's telling them. So now a, a, a supervisor or a king might take this approach if he felt like people were like ungrateful or something like that. So he's like, oh, you keep talking, it's going to get worse. What does that remind you of? What do y'all remember that was like this in the Bible? What was like this? The wilderness. Wilderness before the wilderness. Y'all remember we was in Egypt? Oh, yeah, the taskmaster. Right? We was in Egypt. We kept on talking. Now you got to find your straw and your bread. You kept on running our mouth, right? Trying to talk about, you know, let us go. Let us go out there. And, and they, you know what I'm saying? They got mad at us. They look like, oh, okay. Obviously, y'all got a lot of idle time, right? Obviously, y'all got a lot of extra time to be coming up, bending together, trying to create a darn union, talking about let's go out here and let's uh, go worship our God, whoever it is that y'all character is, right? So I'll tell you what. Instead of us providing straw for you, right, you go find your own darn straw, right? Not only do you have to make the brick, but now you got to find the material to make the bricks on your own. And you need to do it in the same time that I gave you to begin with. Right? So that's that's kind of the approach that was taken. Like, oh, since y'all since y'all got so many complaints, we're going to make it worse. And that's what's happening here, too. He's like, oh, well, if y'all got complaints to make, we're going to make it worse. We're going to take it up a notch. If you know the scripture, you might be able to avoid that. Right? When you look at the scripture and you look at the history, you're like, hmm. 
Uh, that would make me seem more like Pharaoh than it would like any of the kings that came before me. Right? You might take a different approach. That's why it's important to know our history and know the scripture. Because when you do that, you can kind of compare yourself and see where you align. You can kind of measure and see, hmm, I got examples that come before me. Where do I fit in all this? How can I take information from that and make a better decision in my life? Right? Remember, Solomon always prayed for the wisdom and the understanding to lead the people. We ain't got no scripture that Rehoboam, his son, did the same thing. His son just went to his friends. And his friends was like, no, nah, go hard on them. Boy. Watch this. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, come to me again the third day. Mm -hmm. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him mm -hmm. and spake unto them after the counsel of the young men, saying, my father made your yoke heavy and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Mm -hmm. That's why the king did not listen unto the people, for the cause was from Yahuwah. That he might perform his saying, which Yahuwah spake, spake by Ahijah, the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. When they say the Shilonite, it means he's from a Shiloh. place called Shiloh. Right? So in Shiloh, that's the first place where our, our tabernacle went, where the Most High God put the tabernacle. And then after that, it was carried, you know, a couple things happened. But after that, it was carried down to, um, the ark at least was carried down to, to Jerusalem. And then the temple was constructed around that. Right? Keep going. Watch this. So when all Israel saw that the king did not listen unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion do we have in David? Mm -hmm. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. All right. So what they're saying right there is they looking like, We ain't got nothing to do with y'all. We ain't got nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? We thought we was in this all together. No, we ain't in this all together. We ain't got nothing to do with you. You ain't got nothing to do with us. You know what I'm saying? We about to go our own way. Watch it. So Israel, depart unto your tent. Oh, so Israel departed unto their tents. Mm -hmm. But so, as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Mm -hmm. So it was still children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah. Like who? Who would have been there? Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin might have been there. Who else? Uh, Reuben. No, Simeon. Simeon, Simeon right? Simeon, Simeon would have been there at that time. Right? So the ones that stayed there... Then Rehoboam still, you know what I'm saying? He kind of still mess around with him, right? Keep going. We in 13? Mm -mm. Okay, let's keep going in 12. Then King Rehoboam. What verse? 18. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 18. Hey, y'all be quiet down there. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stone. All right. That he died. So now what do you think he mean by tribute? Uh, taxes. Taxes, right? You remember Solomon set it up to where people had to pay taxes, right? They had to pay tribute. So Solomon, hey, y'all don't hear me? So he set it up to where people had to pay the tribute, right? So then when the tribute, when the time for the tribute, remember, they just fell out. Israel was looking like, no, nah, we ain't got nothing to do with you no more. So then, he still sent this boy up there to collect the money. And when it was time to collect the money, they saw that boy. They said, are you coming up here collecting? Oh, so you thought we were playing. And then they killed him. The one that was that was responsible for collecting, he, he come every month. You know, every month he comes. Same thing. He ain't doing nothing but doing his job. They just had a fell out, fall out. Ain't nobody told him, no, nah, you might not want to go up there this time. He went up there like, ah, what you do, Wild? Hey, how you doing, Dave? Dave looking at him weird. You know what I'm talking about? All right, man, let's see, let's see what we got. All right, so do we have the money this month? God, everybody just looking at him. He's like, man, you got the, you got the money? You know what I'm saying? Money, same money, you know what I'm saying? Everybody looking at him now. You know, so, you know, you know King Rhea Boom ain't going to like you. I ain't got the money now. Somebody better come up with the money or it's going to be some problem. Oh, it's already a problem. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you know what I'm saying? He's throwing the rock up and down just like this. You know what I'm saying? And he start to get the picture like, Oh, no, he tried, probably tried to take off like that. Jacket, jacket, you know what I'm saying? Now all these watches start doing, and they kill him. They stole him to death. You know what I'm saying? Because they looking at, oh, you got some nerve. We already told Rehoboam we ain't got nothing to do with him. Jeroboam is looking at this like, no, nah, this is my time. It's time for me to take over this thing. So now let's see. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. 
And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. So they made Jeroboam king, just like the prophecy said. Remember the Most High God said, I'm going to give you the ten tribes. Look at this. The ten tribes, you know what I'm saying? The northern tribes made him king. Watch this. Keep going. <coughs> there was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. Mm -hmm. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and four score thousand chosen men. Right. But so now, so now you had you had Judah that automatically is rolling with Rehoboam, but Rehoboam actually ended up getting convincing Benjamin to stay with him too. Right. So now the ones that was absolutely given to uh or the the amount of tribes that was absolutely given to jeroboam were 10 and one tribe was absolutely given to rehoboam which was judah right so that left one tribe out right 10 plus 1 equal 11 and there's 12 tribes right so that left one tribe out that wasn't accounted for right that tribe you kind of look at it like that tribe was up the grab whoever talked to me first you know what i'm saying Whoever talked to me first, get it. So Rehoboam went to Benjamin like, yo, because they next door neighbors, right? So he went to Benjamin like, yo, yo, is anybody over here in Kish? Yo, so, uh, them boys tripping up more. Y'all with me or what? Benjamin like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's kind of, you know what I'm saying? Might go roll. All right? So they started riding with, with Judah at that point. Let's see what else happened. Yeah, it ties back to the promise that Jonathan and David made. To always, you know, have each other's family take care of each other forever. That's right. In Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Mm -hmm. But the word of God came unto Sh Shem Shemaiah, mm -hmm. the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah. All right, so Rehoboam. He getting the armies together. Like, oh, no, no, I need the baddest boys out of Judah. Benjamin, I know y'all got some bad boys. Y'all still got some boys that sling the rock? Bring them boys on. You know what I'm saying? Let's get these boys, right? He getting, it all, he getting the people all round up, like giving them a nice speech. They thought that they could depart from us. Will we have the temple on the most high God? Getting the people all round up. They're like, oh, let's get them. And all of a sudden, Jimmy I come out like, yo, yo, yo. Let me get a word with you. Most high God spoke to me. Let me get a word with you. You know what I'm saying? We're born like, ah, oh, give me a second. I need to talk to Shia. You know what I'm saying? Shimmy I. Right? Let's see what happens. Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah. Uh -huh. And unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, You uh -huh. shall not go up, nor fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. He said, You shall not go up, nor shall you fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Right, most like God said, don't do it. Let's see, what else? Return every man to his house, but this thing is from me. Right? So he said that in front of everybody. If he just whispered to Rehoboam, what do you think Rehoboam might do? You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know if that really came from God. Let me talk to Bernard. The prophet came and said it in front of everybody. Then he told the people, he said, every one of y'all return to your tent. This thing came from me. In other words, this thing came from God. Right? The reason why this split happened that's what he's saying when he said it came from God. The reason why y'all upset, the reason why the split happened, the reason why they rebelling against Judah, it came from God. Right? So it ain't nothing for y'all to be fighting over. I'm the one who would fight me. If y'all that's basically that's basically what God tried to tell them. I'm the one who did this if you mad. Right? Let's see, keep going. And they listened to the word of the Lord and returned to depart according to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim. So and now let's look at the map again, right? So remember, he went to Shechem. <clears throat> That's where Rehoboam went. Rehoboam went to Shechem to be made king. Right? So immediately, the first thing that Jeroboam did is what? Let me build up Shechem there. Because Jeroboam got to put a name for itself in these places. So Jeroboam was like, all right, let me build up Shechem. What else did he do? And Jeroboam said in his way, and... And dwelt therein and went out from there and built Penuel. Right? So now, Jeroboam's kingdom is where? In Shechem. Right? Listen to what he said. 
he built up Shechem. And then what else? And dwelt there. And he went dwelt out from there. there. So in other words, he lived there. And then he did what? And he went out from there and built the new well. And he went out from there. Right? So this is where he set up his own house. And he dwelt there. He lived there. Then that's where he left from. And then he went to Peniel. Right? Watch this. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to sacrifice in the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again to their Lord, even the Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Right? So now think about what he's saying. He's saying, look, I'm in Shechem. All my people are in all this green area right here. Right? But guess what? The house of Yahuwah is right here. And we got laws that say three times a year, we got to appear at the house of Yahuwah. You want Passover? Passover and gathering and gathering is one and feast of weeks and the feast of weeks. Right. So these are three holidays where we might consider holidays. Right. It's three appointed times that we have to appear at the temple. The temple is in Jerusalem. What else is in Jerusalem in that area? Rehoboam. Rehoboam in his kingdom. So his palace is there. Jerusalem is like the biggest city. The most popular city. That's where everybody want to be. Right? And then three times a year, all the Jeroboam people are going to go there. So Jeroboam is thinking, oh, if they go to Jerusalem, what they going to want to do? Stay. They going to want to stay. They going to be going into this man's kingdom. I'm at war with this man, Loki. Right? I, ain't, I, just kill, I just killed the person that's supposed to be collecting taxes. Right? So in his mind, I'm kind of at odds with him. We kind of got issues right now, right? If I if my people go there trying to serve God, then we're going to be in a situation where I'm going to lose every one of them because people are going to be coming from way up here and they're going to be going down to Jerusalem. They'll be coming all the way from over here and they're going to be going down to Jerusalem. They're going to be traveling across the sea. They're going to be going down to Jerusalem, right? And so he's looking like that's dangerous. So he came up with a plan. Let's listen to his plan. Let's see what he got. If this people go to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then their heart shall turn to the people again to their Lord and unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they will kill me and mm -hmm. go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Mm -hmm. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, O Israel, that brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Right? He said, it is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. So he said, to keep them from going to Jerusalem, to go to the temple of God, to pray to God and speak to God and do all these things. He said, no, no, no. I have another idea. He made two golden calves, right? And he said, behold, you're God that brought you out of Egypt. Where did he get that from? That's right. He got he it from it not from Moses. Moses. He, he got it from that. Aaron. But you put that on Moses. Right? Grab, uh, grab, let's get it real quick. Grab Exodus. Good job, though. Grab Exodus chapter 32. Is Exodus chapter 32. Give me verse 1. What you over there doodling? He ain't paying attention, that's for sure. So when we ask him these questions next week, you're going to be like, uh... I, I, I you know what I'm saying? Let me look at my notes, and then you're going to see a bunch of scribbles on there from when he's <laughs> doodling. This is a little fishy. It's a little hot, ain't it? Y'all a little hot? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, you know, there ain't a little, you know what I'm saying, tote in here. It's not that hard, but it's hard. I thought he was proactively going up to turn off the air. I'm about to say, you know, you all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how to work there? Yeah, go ahead and put a little air, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain. Oh, you can't trust these boys, man. I'll tell you. I don't know what's wrong with these boys. They're like they brain on you, Michael. That ain't crazy. <laughs> anyway, let me see what we got. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together up unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. Mm -hmm. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Mm -hmm. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. Mm -hmm. And all the people broke off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Mm -hmm. and, re and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with the graving tool 
mm-hmm. after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be your gods, O Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. So you see where Jeroboam got it from. Jeroboam quoted, he quoted scripture. You have to understand that. He quoted the book. He quoted where Aaron said, these be your, held up golden calves, just like Jeroboam did, and said, these be your gods that brought you out of Egypt. So Jeroboam was smart enough to use scripture to find something that people were at least were familiar with to say, ah, this is what causes us to stumble in the past. Well, maybe I can use this to replace the temple, right? To replace the most high God. And he did this in the interest of keeping the people from going back to Judah. However, if he would have listened to the prophet, the prophet said, if you do what I say, your kingdom will be all right. Now, if he would have trusted in that, he would have known that his people would have came back to him after going to serve God in Jerusalem. All right. But he, that, that when people say, just trust God, that's what they're talking about. When the Most High God tell you to do something, and the way the Most High God tell us to do something is in this book, right? But when the Most High God have a commandment out, that you do the commandment, even when it look like, mm, this, gonna, this ain't going to work out for me. Even when it look like this might be a bad idea. You still say, yeah, but... Most like God told me to do it. So you go with it. It might feel good to do something wrong, but guess what? Mm, no, most like God told me not to do it. Right? That's what trusting God is. If, had he trusted God in that way, he'd have died. He'd have had a kingdom established. Just like David. That's what the book said. Just like David, he'd have had a kingdom established. So we'd have Judah and we had Israel and we'd have this kingdom that continuous with both of them. No, 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 no. Right? We're going to see that Jeroboam going to die, and he don't get to pass his kingdom down to his kids. Remember, David, when David died, who did the kingdom go to? Who? Solomon. And when Solomon died, who did the kingdom go to? Rehoboam. Right? David's son is Solomon. Solomon's son is Rehoboam. So it stays in the family. We're going to see when Jeroboam dies, because he didn't obey God, it's going to go to somebody else. Totally different family. We're going to still have a king, but it's going to go to a totally different family. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Uh, uh, Rehoboam. Let's go back to Rehoboam. This is uh, what? Kings 12, 28. This is 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, O Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Mm-hmm. And he set the one in Bethel and the other in Dan. All right, so now let's look back at this map, right? Because he put one of these things in Bethel and he put one of these things in Dan. So I just want you all to be able to see where this is approximately on these maps, right? So he put one here in Bethel, right? You see that of the northern kingdom, that's at the bottom. And then he put one all the way up here in Dan. You see, that's all the way at the top. So he made it so no matter where you go, no matter where you are, it's convenient for you not to make it to Judah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you down here close to Judah, nah, 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 you ain't got to travel all the way to Dan. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, if you down here and there was nothing in Bethel, guess what's closer? Jerusalem. Right? So if I'm living in AI, I'm looking like, man, I ain't traveling all the way to Dan to go see no darn golden calf. Not when the temple is right around the corner. That's crazy. So he's like, no, 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 I got something for you. you. Put one in Bethel. So now if you in AI, you go right to Bethel. That's easy. You in Shechem, you go right to Bethel. That's easier. Right? Now if you way up here, you know what I'm saying, you might want to go to Dan. So he made it convenient for everybody, but in a way that you will not ever need to go to Jerusalem. That's why he got two two golden calves. So he put one one golden calf in Bethel. He put one golden calf over in Dan. Right? Watch this. And those those golden calves represented God. Right? So it's like, yeah, this is Yahuwah. This is the image of Yahuwah. This is how you know it's Yahuwah. Pray to this. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And this thing became a sin. Mm-hmm. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. Mm-hmm. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people. Right? Which were not of the sons of Levi. So who's supposed to be the priest for us? Who's supposed to be the priest? Huh? You know what I'm saying? What you gotta do? What family you gotta come from to be a priest? 
You know this one, but I don't even know why you over there playing. I'm talking to TJ. Your budget know too, but I'm talking to TJ. Who, what family do you got to come from to be a priest of our nation? No, we talking about the part there. You got to be Aaron. You got to be a son of Aaron, right? And Aaron, yes, is a Levite, right? So that's why the books say they ain't even Levites. But really, to be a priest, you can't just be a Levite. You got to be a son of Aaron, right? But these people that he's making priests, they not even Levites at all, right? Keep going. So he's making, the books say he's making anybody a priest. Keep going. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, <laughs> sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he right. placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. Right? So now he made he made a uh, feast. So when it's saying feast, it's talking about a point in time or something like, you know what I'm saying, yeah, something like a holiday. Man. You know what I'm saying? So now let's look at the holidays. I just want you to, I want y'all to be able to see, I want y'all to be able to see the days that the Most High God actually set up, right? So if we look at the days that the Most High God actually set up, we got a day here on the 15th day of the first month, Abib, right? So this is the first month, Abib. And then on the seventh month, we have one on the 15th day, right? So two times a year, we have on the on the 15th day of the month, we have a feast, right? On the first month and on the seventh month. Now read again what he set up. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. Eighth month. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The month of bull, right? And on what day? On the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, sacrificing unto calves that he had made. So look how similar he made it to our feast. He made it the month after the feast that we keep, but he made it the 15th day of the month, just like a lot of our feasts are, right? On the 15th day of the month. Even Purim, right? If we look at Purim, it's in the 12th month, but it's on the 15th day of the month. Right, so that's oftentimes when we celebrate is the halfway through the month on the fifteenth day of the month. So what he did is he said, "Hmm, okay, the feast that they going that they they used to going, I'm gonna kind of make my own little feast and make it close enough, right? I'm gonna make it close enough that you know what I'm saying it'll feel just like the real thing." So he used scripture to develop something with the golden calves. He used something that we is already used to, something that's out of scripture. Right, he used scripture to cause people to disobey God. It's important that you understand this. Right, then after that, he set up a, a holiday that's very similar to the holidays that we have. Right, because he's trying to give the impression that this stuff is from God. Right, so he set it up on the 15th day of the eighth month. Let's keep going. What else we got? So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month, even in the month which he had devised in his own heart. Look, is it when they say devised in his own heart, what does that mean? It means it has nothing to do with God. I mean, he made that thing up, right? He made that thing up. That's what he said. That's what that's saying. He made that thing up. What? Why did he make it up? Let's see. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the offer and burnt incense. That's it? Yeah. So why did he make it up? To keep people from going to Jerusalem. His whole point was to keep people from going to Jerusalem. A direct disobedience to God saying every year, three times a year, y'all go to Jerusalem. You have to think about why he's doing this. His, what is he trying to gain? King. He wants to keep his kingdom thriving. Right? That's all he's trying to do. He's trying to keep his kingdom private. He knows, remember, his original statement was, if these people go down to Jerusalem, they're going to mess around and fall in love with the king, and they're never going to come back. Right? So, more important to him than God and what people should do and how they should serve God is his kingdom. Does that sound familiar? No? Who been to church? You been to church before? 
You ever been to church on Easter? You ever been to church on Easter Sunday? So this weekend is Easter, right? What you gonna find? Matter of fact, I might just, you know what I'm saying? If y'all ain't doing nothing, I might just drive y'all around and just show y'all how busy. All these churches that are right down the street, where am I? Right down the street, right over here. All these churches, it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be packed. People gonna be having on their best darn outfit. You're gonna see some, I mean, some nice suits. These boys gonna be out here. Boom. Nice shoes, nice suits. You don't see all these little girls with these beautiful dresses, bright colors, yellow, all this stuff, because that's what they do on Easter. It's a big, big celebration for these Christians, right? And guess what? They devised it in their own heart. You know where Easter came from? Easter came from another tradition, from another God. But Christians, this is what they did. Christians said, well, I don't want you guys to serve that God anymore. I want you guys to serve Jesus Christ because he died on the cross for your sin. Right? So what Christians did, they said, hey, I'll tell you what, to keep you from serving that God, keep the same tradition, just like what we're saying, he make a very similar tradition, Jeroboam did, right? Keep the same tradition, but Instead of serving, you know, Ashtaroth or serving, you know what I'm saying, these other gods, right? The goddess of fertility or any of these other gods, serve Jesus Christ. So we're going to name this day Easter. Why do you think they lay eggs? Why do you think they, you have Easter egg hunts? Where do you think the egg came from? You think that got anything to do with God? Nothing at all, right? But it does have to do with fertility. Who knows what fertility is? So fertility... You got every every woman, right, inside of her, got a whole bunch of eggs. Who knew that? They ain't teach y'all that in school? <laughs> Maybe might be a little too young. You got you got eggs inside of you, right? All women have eggs inside of them, right? So these eggs that sit inside of them are real small, they sit inside of their body, right? They're reproductive organs. These are reproductive organs, right? They sit, they sit inside of you, right? So then when a woman ends up being pregnant, it's because one of these eggs got fertilized, right? So it's just like a seed, right? It's a seed that's in the ground. You water the seed, and then eventually a plant grows out of it. Well, it's the same way. I saw the Most High God divide, uh, uh, made our bodies also. So our bodies where if that seed gets watered, then guess what? A baby grows out of it, and then she becomes pregnant, Right? So that's what the eggs is all about. It's about fertility. So there was a goddess of fertility, right? That'll make women pregnant. It'll, it'll, you know, cause women to be the mothers of the earth and all that. So when women couldn't have babies, they would pray to this goddess like, oh, please just let me have a baby, this, that, and other. So that's where all these eggs and all this stuff came from, right? So now they took this tradition that was serving a false god, a god that's not real, that people are going to go to hell for serving. And because the Christians just wanted people to serve Jesus Christ. You know what they said? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Do the same thing. Keep doing the Easter egg hunt. Do all the same stuff. But now, don't call on that guy's name. Call on, call on Jesus Christ. Right? And in their mind, they think they're doing a good thing. Just like in Jeroboam's mind, he think he's doing a good thing. But the focus is not on God. The focus is on building a Christian church. I want my Christian church to be full. So it's the same reason that all these Christian pastors that's about to be celebrating Easter this weekend, not all of them, but the average of them, they know Christian. We're, 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 they know exactly where Easter come from. They know it come from a false God. They know it ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. They know that, right? But they're not going to stop. You know why? Because it keeps the church strong. They never have higher attendance than Easter Sunday. They never have more people coming to church than Easter Sunday. They got more people paying money in the church. When they pass around that darn plate on Easter Sunday, guess, guess what else happens around Easter Sunday? All the poor people get their tax return. Let me tell you something. They got a little money in their pocket. You give them a good little word like, oh, you can do it. God is going to rescue you. He's breaking the chains. You got a breakthrough coming, sister. 
you got a breakthrough coming, but all this stuff and make them feel good and pass the plate around on Easter Sunday when it's packed. Easter Sunday, they got like three, four, five services. So that means they fill up the church once, they preach to the people, they pass the plate around, people donate money to them, they collect the money in, they get everybody out, then they bring the next back in. And they do that three, four times, fill up the church, collect money, and keep going. It's big money going. So it's very hard to turn away and say, you know what, this ain't about my church. This is about the Most High God and people learning the truth. This is about keeping the standard that the Most High God has. It's a very difficult thing to turn that away, right? But somebody got to do it. If you don't, then you just like Jeroboam. Because Jeroboam created the holiday just like the Christians did. Like, same thing with Christmas. Who do you think Christmas got anything to do with the book? No, nah, nothing at all. Nothing at all. No, nah, they took all those traditions from something else, and they tried to make it similar to God by just saying, Oh, it's about Jesus Christ and it's his birthday. Ain't got nothing to do with no birthday. Right? Ain't got nothing to do with nobody's birthday. It's a it's a copy of the old tradition from serving other gods, and they just wanted the people who serve those gods to still feel comfortable and to not uproot their traditions. So to make it easy for them, keep doing your same traditions. Just call on Jesus now. Right? All this stuff is all this stuff is wickedness and confusion. Right? That's why we try to stay away from this stuff because it keeps you from getting to God just like Jeroboam did. He kept people from getting to God. He said, no, no, no. Just go to Bethel. You ain't got to go to Jerusalem. Go to Bethel. And spiritually, the same thing is happening to us. Right? Spiritually, we trying to go to Jerusalem. Right? But that's not happening for us. We being stuck in Bethel looking at golden calves. We going all the way to Dan looking at golden calves. Right? It's time for us to break free of that stuff and learn the truth, understand the truth and celebrate the truth. Right. That's why we kept Passover last week. We ain't about to keep these people. So you think I'm going to mess around with them darn Easter? What, what's wrong with these people? We got the truth. What I'm going to go back to some lies for? That's craziness. We're going to eat good for some Passover and we're going to have some fun. We're going to keep moving. In a couple weeks now, we got to start counting weeks. Right. <coughs> All right. So we had Passover. And we had the feast of, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the first fruit sheath wave, wave when it was last week. So now this weekend is going to be the first Sabbath, right? It's going to be the first full Sabbath since the Passover week. So we got to count seven of those, right? And on the seventh Sabbath, the day after that, that becomes the feast of weeks. So that's going to be the next day that we, we, we stay together. It's going to be on a Sunday, the feast of weeks, right? Let's keep going. And behold, there came a man out of God of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Mm -hmm. And he cried against the altar and the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah, mm -hmm. behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah mm -hmm. by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee, mm -hmm. and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. All right. So now you have a man of God, a prophet. He shows up. He's talking to Jeroboam, because Jeroboam doing all this wild stuff. He went to one of Jeroboam's altar. Where was it? Bethel. He went to the one that was in Bethel, right? That was the one southern, right? So then he went to the one in Bethel. He looked like, yo, yo, yo. All your priests. Oh, remember, he set up fake priests. He was like, all your priests. Oh, them boys going to get lit up, right? Let's see what happens. He's trying to tell Jeroboam what's about to happen. Right? A child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon you shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon you. And men's bones shall be burned upon you. Mm -hmm. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be ripped, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it, and it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the men of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. Right? So now Jeroboam, he the king. So we see this man, this random man, talking I'm talking all this mess, talking to the altar like, oh yeah, altar, I'm going to tell you this. It's going to come a day where these boys going to be burned on your butt. All the priests, they going to burn your butt. They going to burn the priest on the altar. Right? And Jeroboam looking at him like, but get that boy. You know what I'm saying? He, he pointing to him like, get him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go kill him. Hey, right? don't let him talk, talk and all that mess, disrespecting me. So he threw his arm out there saying, get him. Watch what happened. 
and his hand, when he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it into him again. Right? So his arm got stuck like that. Right? He threw his arm out there, and that thing dried up. You know what I'm saying? To where he couldn't pull it back. So that thing was just stuck like that, all dry. You know what I'm saying? Skin all, you know what I'm saying? The mat all wrinkled and dried up. You know what I'm saying? Like his old arm just died, but it's stuck. So he like this. He's like, get that boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, man. You know what I'm saying? He smacked it. You know what I'm saying? He smacked his man in the face. Like, whoa, my fault, my fault, boy. Like, I don't know what happened to this thing. Boy, jump. My, my bad, my bad. I'm trying to fix this thing, right? Watch what happened. The, also, the altar also was ripped, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the men of God had given by the word of the Lord. So all of a sudden, then the altar ripped. So now the man of God just said, hey, this is the sign to know everything I'm telling you is going to be real. Because at first, this is just a random guy talking. So Jeroboam said, kill him. His thing, his arms were, but he was like, listen, this is the sign that's going to happen. When that altar rip and the, everything and the ashes that y'all been burning on it just starts to spill out, that's how you know when I'm telling you, it's going to happen. So out of nowhere, that thing ripped. His arm stuck like this, then the altar ripped. What do you think the people are thinking now? That's a prophet. Oh, that boy. That boy is a prophet. Right? That boy is bona fide. That's a prophet. Right? So watch this. And the king in Josiah is going to be the one to burn it and get rid of it. But this is way, way later. King Josiah don't show up for a while. Mm -hmm. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, entreat now the face of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me again. All right. So he's stuck like this. And now after he see that, he's looking like, oh, you really do know God. You know what I'm saying? He's like, look, 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 look. Why don't you uh, ask God to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Pray to God for me. You know what I'm saying? Pray that my hand is, is back to normal. Right? So look at what the man of God do. You got to understand this also. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to start as y'all get the older. You know what I'm saying? Especially if y'all stick with me and y'all y'all learn this stuff. Y'all going to get familiar with a bunch of different groups that almost look like they teach the same thing as me. All right? They going to almost look at They going to be like, oh, no, we from ICUUP. You know what I'm saying? They gonna look like you know what I'm saying. We we the we the uh, I U I C. You know what I'm saying? We the children of Israel, children of Israel, Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Christian. You know what I'm saying? Christian. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. These boys got all these weird names, right? So they come up with these weird names, and they gonna tell you that, oh yeah, black people is Hebrew, and y'all gonna hear that, and y'all gonna be like, you know what? That's what Uncle Phil Moore and Uncle Timmy teaching, right? They gonna be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know what I'm saying? You gotta keep the law. You know what I'm saying? Don't eat pork. It's like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what Uncle Phil Moore and Uncle TV teaching. Right? And it's going to feel familiar. But that thing ain't going to be the same. Right? It ain't going to be the same at all. Right? So you're going to have to know how to separate it because some people just run in their mouth. But it was the same thing. You have, you have individuals, right, that could just walk up out of nowhere and that could tell you, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so and so is happening, and then you realize they actually a prophet. And at that point, when people realize you actually a prophet, guess what? They got a different level of respect for you. So then, the prophet, the true prophet from the Most High God, is gonna handle that correctly. Y'all gonna see these people that think they teaching the same thing. You never gonna hear me call myself a prophet, and if I do, it's gonna be because the Most High God actually told me that, and He ain't never told me that. I ain't never heard from God. I ain't got none of that. All I do is read this book. Right? So ain't nothing special. Ain't nothing crazy. Ain't no hocus pocus. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no vision for y'all. I ain't got no dream for y'all. All I got is book. Right? You're going to have a lot of these other boys that seem like they tell teaching the same thing as Uncle T and Uncle Philip that's going to tell you that they prophets. They're going to tell you they apostles. They're going to tell you that these, they, these very special people. Right? And it's going to come the time that they're going to be talking about these leaders. They're going to be talking about Donald Trump. They're going to talk about Biden. They're going to talk about presidents. They're going to talk about senators and, and mayors and all these people. And they're going to be white people that they talk about. And these white people one day are going to ask them to pray for them. And they won't do it. Just pay attention. Because it's important you understand what a real prophet of God look like versus these fakers. Right? Notice that these people today are absolute haters of the establishment. Right? They absolutely hate it. 
right? And they won't, they won't, they won't subserve to it at all. Look at the man of God when he's talking to the king that he put a prophecy against, this king that don't serve God at all. He put a prophecy against this king. The king armed stuck like this. The king asked him, after he was just about to try to kill this man, the king asked him, can you pray for me to get yeah, my arm back to normal? Man. Right? Can you put my arm back to normal? Watch this. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him again. And became as it was before. He prayed for him and his arm went right back to normal. That's what a man of God does. If you remember, the exact same thing that Moses did to the king of Pharaoh. The king of Pharaoh had us as slaves. King I mean, uh, king, king of Egypt, Pharaoh. You know what I'm saying? Pharaoh had us as slaves. Right? Our people were slaves. Moses didn't go to him like, man, I'm about to knock you out. Let my people go. No, he went to him like, yo, you mind if, uh, you know what I mean? Mind if we, you know what I'm saying? Yahuwah said, you know what I mean? We just want to go out there and serve our God. If Pharaoh said no, did Moses rebel? Did he pick up picket signs and start walking? We will not go. No. He took their butt back to the house. You know what I'm talking about? We were like, all right, for sure. But guess who protested for us? The Most High God. He put plagues on, on the Pharaoh. And then guess what the Pharaoh asked? He did. Go to Azzy and Eli to get in. Right? Guess what the Pharaoh asked? Pharaoh said, hey, can you pray to kind of lift these, these plagues off of me a little bit? And guess what Moses did? You know, Moses, our God, you might want to, you know what I'm saying? You might want to lift it off. He asked, you know, he asked for that. Moses, our God lifted them off. Right? That's what a true man of God does. It's not emotional for a man of God. These people are emotional. They mad. No, man, I ain't helping the white man. These people have us as slaves. No, this, that, another. That's emotional. Right? A man of God got to tuck that thing in every time. Man of God got to sit there. We're going we gonna to talk about, look, pretty soon we're going to be talking about prophets that they lose their wife. They lose their livelihood. And they got to tuck it in. They just got to act like, they don't know. okay, just keep going. Just keep going. Do what God say. It's a challenge. That's what a man of God do. You think this man, he is just about to get killed by Jeroboam. You think he want to pray for him? No, you just got to do what you got to do. Right? So let's see how this go. And the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. Look, the king said to the man of God, come home with me. Refresh yourself. Right? He trying to be his friend now. You know what I'm saying? Let me, you know what I'm saying? Let me mess with you. What this remind you of? Laban. Who? Laban. Laban. Uh, what's the name? Uh, in in uh, in Judges. Hmm. Judges. That might be a good one. Let's see. Keep going. Let's see. If, let's see if any other anything else pop up. And as and the man of God said unto the king, If you will give me half your house, I will not go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. He said, look, the man of God said, look, even if you gave me half of your house, that's the king. He said, even if you gave me half of your house, I can't go with you. And I can't do what? Uh, I cannot go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. What does that remind y'all of now? Who was that? Uh, who was my man? Uh, What's his name? Balaam. 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 That's the one I'm looking for. Give me numbers. What I want. Numbers 22? 23. <laughs> 23. <coughs> never go wrong with nine. You can never go wrong with nine. That's a, that's a fact. But this time I want numbers chapter 22, verse 15. This is numbers chapter 22, verse 15. Yeah, Sister Pamela, I like that one too. And Benjamin, you know what I'm saying? Because they did offer him to come on in, right? But look at look at Balaam. Remember, Balaam was a prophet too, right? And he was entreated by uh, cut it out, boy. And he is entreated by uh, by Balak, and Balak wanted him to curse our people, right? He wanted him to curse our people, and Balaam was like. 
Nah, I can't do it. But watch what happened. Let's read it. This is uh, Numbers chapter 22, verse 15. Michael, get your butt back over here and sit down. Zakai, sit your butt down. I ask y'all one thing every time, and y'all seem to forget. And Balaam, and Balaam sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they mm -hmm. came to Balaam, and they said unto him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder you from coming unto me. For I will promote you unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever you say unto me. Right? So Balaam, like, look it. I just need your help. Whatever you need, I'll give you great honor. And whatever you ask for, I got you. Watch what Balaam say. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balak were give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of my Lord, my, of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Right? So it's very similar to what the man of God said. He's like, man, look, if you gave me, he told Jeroboam, if you gave me half your house, right, I can't go with you. Because the most high God told me, don't drink no water from these people and don't eat no bread from these people. Right? And Balaam said something similar. He's like, listen, if you gave me your whole house full of silver and gold, I can't do nothing more or less than what the Most High God told me to do. Right? But ultimately what happened with Balaam is Balaam ended up going back with him. Watch this. Go to, uh, ooh, this one might be a little difficult. <laughs> give me, not 20, give me 23. Give me the end of 23. This is Numbers chapter 23. And give me the end. It should say something about he he returned or he, um, I forget what it say, but it, it, what it what it say at the end? Maybe the last four verses or something. Mm. Behold, the people shall rise up. That's a great line. No, after that. So, but Balaam answered and said, "Didn't I tell you?" Saying all that the Lord speak that I must do. Yeah, keep going right there. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring you, I will bring thee unto another place. For adventure I will please God. It will please God that you may curse me, curse me them from there. Mm -hmm. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor now that keep looked going toward Jeshimon. That's the last four verses? Yeah. What's the last verse there? And Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. That's the last verse? Mm -hmm. Oh, then go to the next chapter. That's 23? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah. That's Balaam saw that it... That's 24 Balaam, you reading right now? Yeah. Okay, go to the end of 24. And returned to his place. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place. Right? So Balaam, he rose up and went and he returned to his place. So Balaam ended up going back the same way that he came. Right? So notice, let's go back to, to, to uh, Jeroboam. Right? Notice the man of God said, look, I can't go back the same way that I came. Right? Nor. Huh? Okay, keep going. Watch this. And the man of God said unto the king, if you will give me half your house, I will not go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Mm -hmm. For so was it charged to me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, do not eat bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. Mm -hmm. So he said he can't even go the same way that he came. He got to go a different way, nor can he drink water. Look, uh, grab uh, Deuteronomy. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. Watch this. Because he said, I can't have bread or I can't water, nor can I go to, I can't have water, nor can I go to the same place that I can. Go the same way that I can. Right? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day of the seventh. That's 23? Yeah. Give me 24 verse Oh, my bad. I'm in a little bit. Thank you. I was like, wait a second. Uh, 
an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah forever. Why, God? Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when they came forth out of Egypt. And because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse you. Because they met you not with what? Water and bread. And they, they hired who against you? Balaam to curse you. Now let's go back to Jeroboam, right? Let's go back to the man of God in Jeroboam. Watch this. Watch what he said. They met you not with bread and water, and they hired Balaam against you. Right? For that reason, these boy can't even come to the congregation. Right? Now let's see again what, what uh, the man of God said to Jeroboam. For so it was told by me, by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread and drink no water. Eat no what? No bread and drink no water. Because he's going to mess around and hire Balaam against you. Lord, he's telling them. He, looked, he gave him the praise because the most high God said we've been here before. These boys will try to trip you up and try to get you to do something. If you mess around and go with him, he will try to trip you up and try to get you to say something that I didn't say. And you might just fall for it just like Balaam did. And make some type of compromise. But he didn't. Man of God didn't make a compromise here. Right? But we're going to hold right now. And next week, we're going to see where the man compromised. Right? Because he is going to compromise. Read the whole no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? We're going to hold on to it. There's a whole lot more to go into. You know what I'm saying? We're going to hold right now. We're going to see next week what he compromised. Right? Any questions? You should know this one, TJ. You know this one? How you compromise? What happened next? I don't know. It's been a long time. He probably forgot. All right. Well, let's pray out. You know what I'm saying? Hit y'all with that next time on Dragon Ball Z. You know what I mean?